Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of May 10, 2021. And this week we got four interesting topics. And the first one is Hotel is bringing a Lance service inside of their app, inside of the controlling app, which is really cool. We're going to talk about a drone that does not have a controller. You're going to say, how does it work? Well, we'll find out in a second. We'll talk about two industry events. We have the FAA Symposium and then we have Flight Fest right around the corner. And then lastly, we'll talk about the FAA that's adding more information to uh, the FAA charts. So let's get to it. And the first thing this week is UA Sidekick is partnering with Hotel. Now, if you're not familiar with UA Sidekick, they are a lens provider. Um, they charge a very small fee, but they also provide a lot of really great information. Uh, they are one of the app that we actually recommend if you want more than just getting a, a simple authorization. And they're actually partnering with Hotel in order to put the lens information directly into the app. So Hotel has the Hotel Explorer app, and now the lens services are going to be directly linked to your um, US Sidekick account. If we look at the information in there, we have flight logs, we have certificates, you can put your waivers, you can put your COAs, you can put a whole bunch of different things straight into the app, which is just you know a, a great way to utilize these services. They should be releasing this pretty soon because the article that we saw actually said that uh, it's gonna be rolled out in the first quarter of 2021. I think we actually passed the first quarter of 2021, so I'm sure it's around the corner. Uh, we're not sure if it's gonna be an additional cost or not at this stage, but we'll keep you posted when we find more. But you can find a link down here if you want more information on this. And UA Sidekick is also in the news this week because they are partnering with the AMA. Now the AMA, you may know them uh, from providing services for people that fly fixed wing aircraft or, or fly at AMA sites for recreational purposes. And, um, and they're partnering with UA Sidekick to get recreational tools for people that fly for fun, for recreational flyers, and when they want to submit lens authorization. So if you're an AMA member, you get free access to UA Sidekick, and you can actually plan your flights and submit lens applications. As you know, lens is not only limited to part 107, it's also limited, it's also available for people who want to fly in controlled airspace that have a, uh, that are flying for fun. So this is a service available. If you're part of the AMA and you try it, let me know how it works. Um, I've used UA Sidekick in the past. We're actually working on a full review of the service and, uh, and it's actually really been a great service. So uh, I recommend that you look into it. The next thing this week is a drone that does not have a controller. Now you may say, how does this work? Well, this is the first 4G or 5G connected, uh, it's called an RTF drone, it's ready to fly drone, and it's exclusively based on 4G and 5G connection. Uh, the, the price point is pretty high, this is the Sky Drone 1, it's $9,500. Uh, it, it's not designed for the the day-to-day -day person, this is more of a, a beyond visual line of sight kind of drone. Uh, this is something where, you know, if you don't have access to a direct connection between the drone and the controller, then you don't need it because everything is done via satellite or via a 4G and 5G connection. Uh, it has an endurance of 45 minutes, uh, a maximum takeoff weight of 3.4 kilos, so that's about a little over seven pounds, and it can be controlled from a PC or using a tablet-based ground station. So that's kind of a, it's a different approach. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have to have a SIM card in there in order to fly the drone, but uh, kind of the, the, the first time that we really see something like this. Now, this is not new technology for the government who's using uh, drones to fly long distance and, and using the same kind of technology, but uh, you know, for the, the, the public sector, this is kind of a first. Uh, some other specs from that drone, we have a camera which does 4K at 60 frames per second, 20 megapixel uh, sensor. It can use a lot of different payloads from Unique. So if you're familiar with the Unique payloads, uh, the E10, uh, E30, and E90 payloads, uh, it is RTK integrated, so it has RTK in the box already, and then the maximum flight speed is 50 miles an hour. So uh, it's designed to be compatible with Mission Planner, so this is something that you can use in a, a wide variety of different applications. Two big events on the horizon. The first one is the FAA Symposium. Um, I've mentioned these before, but it's it's coming around uh, June 9 and June 10 is episode three. Now you're gonna say, what happened to episode one and two? Well, they happened last year. Uh, they're, uh, they must be a Star Wars fan and <laughs> whoever created this. And uh, so now they have episode three and episode four. Episode four is gonna be September 14 and 15. A uh, bunch of different topics, safety, remote ID, night flights, first responders, uh, trust. Uh, trust is the new FAA test for recreational flyers. 
STEM and education, uh, beyond visual line of sight, a lot of different things. I'm actually going to be presenting during episode three. I was invited by the FAA to talk about uh, UAS night operations. So uh, you can find more information. We put the link down there. It's not cheap to enter. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that the FAA has something for people that are flying for recreational purposes and make it more accessible. Maybe they have sessions that are free. I don't know. Uh, this is something that we recommended last time we met with the FAA, but we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, but anyway, it's always good information. I attended the two episodes last year and uh, there was a ton of really good information. Um, the next big event is Flight Fest. And this is our friends at Flight Test that are putting this on. Uh, this is uh, not the first year. They've been doing this for years and years. But uh, I think they took a break last year. This happens in Ohio. Uh, this year it's going to be July 15 to July 18. And uh, this is the, I like to call it the sun and fun of, uh, of model flying. You can go out there, you can get a tent, you can go camping, uh, a ton of people flying. They have a festival, they have concerts, they have uh, an RC air show. Uh, you can obviously go and, and meet with the guys from Flight Test and, uh, and get your pictures taken with them. I like their slogan built, fly, crash, repeat. And uh, it's always a ton of fun to see the photos. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend this year uh, because of personal reasons, but uh, we're adding a new member to my family. And, um, but, uh, but I will be there next year for sure. But if you go, please take pictures. Uh, we are sponsoring Flight Test and we have uh, a beautiful hangar that we sponsored with Flight Test where they're gonna be building all of their stuff. So if you go into the Pilot Institute hangar, uh, make sure that you take pictures and, uh, and send them to us and uh, we'd love to see that. So more information, flight test, uh, flightfest.com. Uh, we'll put the link down in the description. Last thing this week is the FAA is putting more information about space launch activity areas on the sectional charts. Uh, if you are part of my course, I, I've shown these areas in the Cape Canaveral because I like to show that, that area I used to fly there. Uh, there's always a little rocket right here on the, on the launch, uh, launch pad. But uh, there's a lot more of these across the countries that are popping up. So spaceports, we have them in Alaska, California, Colorado, uh, Florida, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Texas, and Virginia. And, um, and make sure that you look on the chart. If you see this, uh, this means that from time to time there's going to be space activity. And make sure that you check the NOTAMs and the TFR so that you don't fly when they're launching these big things. Uh, that could be a lot of trouble. So uh, this also means that there are some areas that are not FAA licensed launch sites like the NASA uh, launch site or the military launch site. So um, again, information that's being added to the chart. So as the charts get updated, you'll see more of these. If you're wondering what that big... Uh, 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 space rocket looks like? Well, that's what it is. It's a space launch. A uh, quick Pilot Institute update. Uh, we have uh, 17,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. So thank you for that. Uh, you guys have been awesome leaving comments uh, and, and just interacting. I absolutely love doing this every Friday. This is kind of what uh, what I do in the morning. I'm just going to get my tea and, and watch the comments and reply to you guys. So um, we just passed the bar for 80,000 students and 110,000 enrollments in our courses. So again, thank you all for doing this, for joining our courses. Uh, we have two cool videos that are coming up right around the corner uh, that we recorded last Friday. We raced FPVs against a bunch of model rockets and, uh, and this was just so, just so much fun. And the results were actually pretty surprising. So uh, we also tested v loss limit. So we took all the drones in our fleet and we basically flew them as far as we could until uh, we couldn't see the visual line of sight and then we came up with some numbers. So uh, these are, are not by any mean how far you can fly the drone. Uh, this is how far we flew it and still felt comfortable that we could see the direction and see the attitude of the drone. But, uh, but we'll post these results out pretty soon in the Drone Busters uh, video. So that's coming around the corner. We also have a new deep dive course for the Air 2S that's right around the corner as well. It's uh, done editing and then that's in the reviewing stage. So we'll be posting that very soon. And then we talked to Brendan Schulman from uh, DJI this week. Uh, in the Pixel Drone Show. So this is our uh, separate channel that we do with uh, Kara and Haya. And uh, 
If you haven't watched the episode, it was actually really interesting to talk to Brendan. He, he kind of talked to us about why uh, we have a 250 gram rule, which I actually didn't know. And he kind of goes back in the history because he was involved with this. Uh, we talk about remote ID. We talk about geofencing. He kind of explains why DJI puts the geofencing in place and kind of the, the reasoning behind it. And actually that cleared up a few questions for me. So uh, a really great episode overall. It's about an, an hour long. Uh, you can watch it on the YouTube channel or you can download it as a podcast if you do the podcast thing and uh, that's all I have so uh, check out our airplane news update as well we're talking about <laughs> an airport in Massachusetts I'm still shaking my head on this one that's trying to uh, tax landing uh, airplanes that are landing at the airport a thousand dollar fee uh, to well to collect some money uh, we'll talk about a brand new aircraft the Falcon 10x that was unveiled uh, we'll talk about people flashing lasers at aircraft and then uh, we'll also talk about the the space launch on the FAA charts over there for our airplane friends so that's it that's all I have like subscribe leave a comment rude remarks whatever it is that you do and uh, we'll see you guys next week Thank you.